With Hyrule Warriors slowly but surely closing in, a lot of people have been asking me, Drake, I want to get into the Warriors franchise, but there's so many games, where do I start? And I certainly do understand the concern, because there is a lot of Warriors games. Like, a lot of Warriors games. Like, there is a lot of fucking Warriors games, god damn it! But fear not, children, for I know the answer to this question that haunts you at night. Now, to my understanding, this is the common understanding among fans, so I have no shame in saying this. Samurai Warriors 2 is the best game you could ever start with. You know, a lot of Warriors games really don't hold up like Samurai Warriors 2. Because I've went back and played them, and... Jesus, man, they have aged horribly. I mean, 80% of Dynasty Warriors 2 is walking around a level looking for health that isn't there. Samurai Warriors 1 is fucking bullshit. And Dynasty Warriors 5, fuck that game. How dare Koei release that game in that condition? This game finds the perfect medium between fast-paced action and perfect combo execution, and does it so flawlessly I can't even begin to describe how good it feels. It controls really nicely, and all the stuff built around it makes the experience worthwhile. The music is fast and exciting, and it always changes on a cue to fit the scenario. The sound effects are punchy and exhilarating, and it's fun to execute combos. It's nice to pull off a string of combos at the last second. And of course, once your level's maxed out, it's fun to go through a bunch of dudes like they're nothing to you. This is the game that makes you actually feel like you're a samurai hero. Or a villain. Whichever you prefer. And this game also has a unique setup to how the typical Warriors games play out. In your usual Warriors game, there is a campaign mode, and you have to follow that campaign mode with each character. However, in the Samurai Warriors franchise, each character gets their own story. So every action and every gameplay element seems a lot more personal when the story is based around this one character. And every character has their own unique cutscene, and every character gets their own plotline development. Everyone goes through an arc. Now, when you're confined to every character getting their own story, a lot of characters are not going to get the full treatment like other characters. Hint, hint, all female characters. In that regard, it would probably have just been to let them be extra characters rather than story-driven characters. But then there comes the problem of why would you ever play as them? I smell strength. Haha, -ha. now here's someone worth chopping to pieces. There's a free mode where you can enter any scenario with any character and see what the scenario would have played out if you were that character. Because you only get five chapters, there's about 25 different stages. Odds are you're not going to be playing them all as the same character. And story mode can only provide you with so many levels. So it would be fun to see what would play out if this character was in this type of level. And that's fine. There's also a mission challenge tower mode thing. And playing through these missions will allow you to unlock new characters and new horses and bodyguards and new stats and all types of neat stuff that would be useful to you. And then there's Sugoroku. It is a board game that has absolutely skill needed to play in it. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you can... Uh, I, I don't even know what this is testing. The fuck is this game? Why is it here? The only reason you need to actually play this game is to unlock a character that's available on free mission, but other than that, nothing else. So the gameplay is fun, the story is engaging, and there's a lot of replay value. You'll literally spend hours trying to find who your favorite character is, and what's your favorite scenario, or your specific level from a story mission. I'm not afraid to take responsibility for my actions. Kill me now. Now, if you're like me and you've done all you could with Samurai Warriors 2 and you still want more challenge, then look no further than Samurai Warriors 2 Empires. It's basically a strategy game built around Samurai Warriors 2 gameplay. 
You can play as one of the canon factions from Samurai Warriors 2, or make up your own faction and randomly generate other factions. You can play as any character ever. Your actions in this game do have consequences, and you have to be very careful about how you progress. If you try to beat this game with the fastest time, you're gonna fail. You actually have to slow down and take your time. Govern the land and make sure you take care of your soldiers. Converse with your generals. Build trust among your people. Or you could be the devious titan instigate. Make other regions go to war with other regions, or have other regions defect from other regions and join you. Make their people rebel against their lord so they'll follow you, which will aid you in combat. And your levels do actually matter. It's actually way more challenging here than in Samurai Warriors 2, plus upgrades and everything has a long-lasting effect. Each playthrough is never the same, each battle is never the same. Hell, the minor soldiers actually have an effect on you. This game has a lot more replay value than the original game. So you'll actually have a lot more fun with it if this is your type of thing. And there's a lot more insight to each individual character in their arcs. Especially Nobunaga. Maybe he's crazy, maybe he's attained enlightenment. Only the old man knows for sure. Is that so? That's his retort for every conversation. Is that so? Is that so? Is that so? Of course, if you're looking for a regular old Samurai Warriors experience, then check out Samurai Warriors 2 Extreme Legends. It had six more characters and six different ways to have fun. The six characters that they add might be the best characters in the game. So it's not like it's legitimately wasting your time. Four of these characters were in the first game, however you could never play as them. Also, they added a new challenge mode, which like the title implies, it's a challenge mode. Didn't really experiment too much with it, but it's pretty much the same as the challenge mode from the first game, so I'm guessing the end goal is to just unlock more unlockables, which is actually pretty fine. You can also import your save from Samurai Warriors 2 onto this game, so at least you can have the full experience of what your save file has to offer. I think. I never actually got that save file thing to work. Plus this game is a lot more laggy than the first game, but then again you can get used to it. It's not that big of a bad sell. If you really like Samurai Warriors 2, and trust me, you probably will, Pick up these two expansions. They're pretty fun. Ah! Of course, you don't have to play all of these games just to get the full experience. You get the same result by just playing the one game. It has a great story, good gameplay, lots of stuff to do, many hours to clock in, and it'll more or less hold you over until Hyrule Warriors comes out. And if the idea of playing as one of video games' greatest iconic villains isn't enough to get your ass to buy the damn Wii U, Fucking go! Get out! Get out! Done with you! I can't take this anymore! You guys, just get the, get the damn Wii U! It's not hard!